tuning in today. We're really glad that you're here. And so as we did last week, today we're focusing on skills and tips to help you deal with the stress and anxieties in the upcoming holidays. We're here for you providing practical skills to help you regulate your emotions no matter what. Some of you may already be heading home or having to go through testing or realizing you can't travel, which are all potential sources of anxiety that can create a whole bunch of emotions. So today's session is going to be really powerful to help us deal with those kinds of emotions effectively. And obviously, we'll be breaking for Christmas, and based on what you've told us last time, we've started putting together a pre-recorded toolbox of skills for you to use during the holidays. Well, not just the holidays, but... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Use it during the holidays and then forget all about them, right? <laughs> Please no. don't do that. Please don't um, do that. We can't wait to share them with you. And if you have other ideas, please don't hesitate to put it in the chat box, and we'll take a note of it. Yeah. And if you're new to Mindset, welcome. Uh, Virginia and I will be guiding you through today's session uh, featuring our resident therapist, Daryl, who is an experienced DBT specialist, trainer, and expert supervisor who has many years of practice in both the NHS and in private practice. Say hello to everyone, Daryl. Hi. <laughs> what a lovely smile. We also have Marge over in the Mindset Lab. Hey, guys. So if you've missed any of our episodes, you are very welcome to go on the Body and Soul Charity <laughs> Instagram, where you can find the campsite link. It's in the bio of the Instagram page, by the way. And you, if you click on the link, you'll find all the resources of Mindset in one handy place. Yeah. So all you need to know is when you go to Instagram, just go to at Body and Soul Charity. Yeah. And it will all be there. Anyway, how are we going to start this week, Virginia? Well, we'll start the week with another dish from our buffet of the mindset on the move skills, which are easy, portable skills to keep your mind in the present moment and build your awareness. Yeah, absolutely. And like all good buffets, for those of you foodies mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. you don't necessarily take food from every single dish, right? Unless, well, I won't say any names. You go back to the ones you like. And you, uh, you know, it's the same thing here, right? So you choose the skills that you like, the ones that work for you. And, you know, it's, yeah. That's what, uh, that's what works. So we're trying a different dish again today, yeah. and it's our mindset on the move. Over, Over to, to you, Daryl. Hi, 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 everyone. Yeah, so um, welcome. We're going to go straight into mindset on the move. And what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to do a, an, an exercise now that has actually got some evidence, has actually got some evidence base to it. So i'll give you the in, i'll give you the instruction first and then and then we'll 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 go into it so what i want you to do is while you're sitting there with your feet flat on the floor um is you're going to you're going to see if you can can soften your face um you're going to see if you can find you see mona lisa in the background you're going to see if you can find that mona lisa smile yeah so a half smile on your face yeah, you're going to try and find that half smile. If someone was looking at you, they wouldn't really be able to notice this. And it, it's it's like you have the corners of your mouth being pulled up. So you're going to find this smile. And then I'm going to ask you to say hello and then your own name. And I want you to say hello to yourself in the warmest, friendliest voice tone that you can. Yeah. So this is internally you say hi. And then I just want you to drop your hand onto your stomach and then for the rest of the time I just want you to make sure that your hand is moving yeah so we find the smile we say hello to ourselves warmest friendliest voice tone we can and then we drop into our stomach and we just keep our hand moving until you hear the chime how what do you mean my hand moving well you look down at your hand yeah. And you make sure that your hand is moving while you're breathing. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll start and finish with the sound.
Okay, so um, if you get hold of your attention, bring it back to the screen. Okay, so the reason I chose this um, exercise today is that there has been some research done on um, on this particular practice about what they call creating new neurological pathways or what they call neurological plasticity. So what I'm more interested in this time is, were you able to find that warm and friendly voice tone to yourself? I'd say it's more neutral. It's not exactly warm and friendly. Yeah, okay. And um, and what's your usual voice tone to yourself sound like? Like a parent parenting kind of tone of voice. Go on, can you give it to me? Like, oh, you have to do this, get this done today. Right. I bet, and I bet it's not even that warm and friendly either. Um, uh, so, so Barbara, what, what, what about you? What's your usual voice tone to yourself like? Were you able to find the warm and friendly one? I don't think so, because it was more like a like a sarcastic sort of fake kind of hypocritical. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you see, when you talk to you, yourself in a sarcastic voice or an angry voice or an aggressive or a bored, fed up voice, right? Or even the parents, this is how you're talking to yourself all day long. So can you imagine what sort of pressure you put yourself under all day? Come on, do this. Why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you being productive? Why are you doing this, that and the other? Yeah. And this alone, so, so the way we speak to ourselves has a great impact on us and, and what we do. So what I really wanted people to do is notice the way that they talk to themselves. And, and what the research on this is showing is that if people can just practice this with the breathing for one minute, three times a day, in six weeks, there is a significant difference, not only in the way that they experience each day, but there are changes in the brain that you can see. And, and, and this research is ongoing and it's being done by um, a guy in Germany, in Mannheim in Germany, uh, uh, a guy called Martin Bohurst. Yeah? And it's showing significant, showing significant differences. So people can practice this. And this is about the connection between the brain and the body. So you might have noticed some of you that you really struggled, right? But, but thinking and talking to yourself differently is just like anything else. It's a, it, it's a practice. Yeah, and Lucy says, I imagined I was saying hello to someone else, so I did manage to get the warmth, but not sure if it's how I'd usually talk to myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, see that that's giving you a clue, isn't it? You know, that's giving it a clue. You may, you know, often, I, I bet a lot of people out there are not talking to other people like they would talk to themselves. They wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare because it would be rude. It would be aggressive. It would be unhealthy. But yet we, we we feel free when we're dysregulated to do it to ourselves. Okay, so that's I think that's it for me on this bit. Okay, right. Thank you, Daryl. So uh, now to introduce um, today's tool of the week, we have a lovely surprise for you at home because our mindset team has lovingly made for you a mind hack video, uh, which will introduce what we're going to learn in this week's tool of the week. Are we ready? and go oh my god this meeting was supposed to end half an hour ago and this woman is going on and on about her cats why are we still here i can't take this anymore will you just shut up you're fired oh my god this meeting was supposed to end half an hour ago i can feel myself getting frustrated okay Willing hands, half smile, that's better. I can get through this. Will you just shut up? You're fired. Looks like someone could have used willing hands, half smile. Right, so you can see how that might that might come in a little bit handy, those, those tools, right? So I suspect some of you at home though, right now, uh, if, you're like, if you're like me, you might be saying to yourself, yeah, right, as if doing something with my hands and a little half smile, you know, is it, gonna really do anything, right? It looks really easy. How could it possibly work? Um, so Daryl, can you enlighten us please? Like how can something that easy actually, you know, make a difference? 
Well, I think the, the what the half smile and the the the, the willing hands do is that um, they both help us accept reality. But to be more kind of precise about it is that our emotions are partially controlled by our facial expressions. Yeah, it's it, if you look at how an emotion works, what you what you'll see is that it's 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 part of the. Uh, you know, we have expressions, we have what we say, we have what we do. And um, yeah, so if, if you could try this half smile and then start um, criticizing people a lot, you, you'll notice that you're not so um, convinced by it. So a half smile is a way to send a message to your brain that something can be tolerated. And it, and it does this because it affects what they call the ventravagal system, yeah? And the ventrovagal system can be used to interrupt emotions. Um, and so, and that is also the same in terms of your hands. When you, um, when you move your hands and your thumbs, what you do is you open up your uh, chest cavity and you start to change, uh, you start to breathe differently. And if you listen to the, la the woman last week, she was saying that breathing affects every physiological response. And emotions are are, are are a physical a physiological response. So that's how half smiling and, and and willing hands. Yeah, they interrupt distressed brain signals. They also give us context. Um, look with these, you, you can notice a difference within the first minute, minute, minute and a half. Um, and and you can do them for as long as as, as long as needed. I mean, generally 10, 15 minutes is is fine. Um, and you can do one of them or you can do both of them. You can actually half smile your way through a day if you want, if you, if you want. Yeah, you can keep bringing it back and noticing it and keep going with it. Lucy says, may you expand more on the idea relating to opening the hands of giving us context? Well, well, you see, when we're, uh, when we're angry, for example, yeah, we tend to hunch, we tend to hunch over a little bit more. And one of the after effects of anger is it narrows our attention. Yeah. So when we're angry, we, we can only really think about things that we're angry about. Yeah. And generally our mouth tightens and drops. So when we use the half smile, we have to our faces start to relax. Yeah. And we may and as we smile, we may be able to see it's easier to see someone else's point of view. Yeah. Because because the anger dissipates. And the more the anger dissipates, the less our attention uh, narrows around it. So, look, the, the the skills we're going to talk about today are quite difficult um, to, to practice, but they're, they're, they're game changers, really. Um, because this is about tolerating distress now. And when we're distressed, we get we have two options. We can either change. We can change something, change our physiology, change the environment change our senses, change where we put our attention. Yeah. But the other side of it is that when we can't change something, what really do we have left? And the option that we're going to talk about now is, is, is to accept. And if you think of the idea of radical means, because we're going to talk about radical acceptance, radical means extreme and acceptance is a, so acceptance is a complete and total openness to the facts of reality. Yeah. And, 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 and without tantrum or, 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 or willful. And the kind of things, times we need to, need to accept, or this is really useful when we are living a life when, when it's not the one that we want. Yeah? So for example, um, you know, I didn't particularly get the parents that I wanted. I mean, I truly hope they're not listening, but I didn't get the, I didn't get the, I didn't get the parents that I wanted particularly, right? Um, you know, uh, my dad's from the West Indies and he has certain views that would not be easily accepted uh, today. So they're useful in situations like that. Or, um, you know, or, or if I think about my, my son, I, I would have loved my son to do boxing and football and stuff like that. And, 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 he's, into, and he's into ballet. So, um, so I could try and change him, couldn't I? Force him to play football and force him to box or play rugby or something like that. Or I can, yeah. Or I could accept that he likes um, he likes dancing. Yeah. So it helps us to come to the come to terms 
with the facts of our own life. Yeah. And what this does, this is about reducing suffering and um, incre increasing our sense of uh, freedom. And what radical acceptance is, is radical acceptance is about causing, um, is about uh, trying to understand that life is, there are some things in life that we, that we, we can't control. Um, you know, and that for, for example, pain, pain in life cannot be avoided, but suffering can be. And, and there is a distinction to make between pain and suffering which is that, um, you know, so pain is putting your hand in a fire and it burning and you pulling it away. Yeah, because the pain is telling you you need to do something. Whereas suffering is putting your hand in a fire and keep putting it back in there and, 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 not, learn, and not learning from it. So the example that, that, that I might give you is, imagine if, imagine if you lived in America, right, and, and you were... Uh, sentenced to a, a life in prison without parole for a crime that you couldn't commit. Oh, sorry, the cr a crime you didn't commit. And you'd exhausted all your appeals. You know, you'd gone all the way up to Donald Trump and amazingly, he couldn't find any forgiveness to let you off, right? And you, so you're in prison for the rest of your life. Now, if you don't accept that you're in prison for the rest of your life, yeah, what are you going to do? How are you going to behave? Yeah. You would probably be miserable every day. You'd be on your bunk and just ruminating and going over it and over and over it. But if you were to accept that things are now out of your control and you are stuck here for the rest of your life, what you might do is you might act very differently. So, for example, you may, um, you know, you may become a trustee of the prison so that you, uh, you know, you get access to more parts of the prison. You might work in the kitchen so that you get better food. You may work in the library so you have the choice of books. You, yeah. So, so what radical acceptance is about is about accepting uh, and not rejecting reality. Because when you reject reality or you live in denial, it doesn't really change anything. It, it just has an impact. It just has an impact um on you so what i'm going to ask people to do is just think of a time when you were disappointed or you didn't get what you wanted in life but you went on anyway so think about how did you first feel when you found out that, the, 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 that this was going on what about you how did you, can you think of one barbara uh yeah i don't know if this is a good example i didn't get the husband i wanted can i use that as an example well, when, when you realized that, yeah, how did you first feel when you realized that you didn't get the husband you wanted? I cried. I was devastated. Right. Okay. And I thought I wasted my, yeah, I thought I wasted my, my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and now think about how it felt when, once you'd accepted it. Have you accepted it? Yeah, because now I'm, well, yeah. So what when, are you doing what are you doing about it now you move into london i'm moving to london i'm on <laughs> i'm on online dating sites um i'm yeah i'm taking steps to build uh to build my life and to find the partner that i want it's better right soon. so this is a great example right so how right so see if you didn't accept that you didn't have the husband that you wanted what you would have done is stayed there and suffered yeah, I, I didn't accept for years. So. Right. So you stayed there and suffered, right? Yeah, 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 for the kids, yeah. So what radical acceptance is about is, um, what radical acceptance is about is that once we accept something, we can then start to problem solve it. And yeah. Which is what you're doing with, with the situation with your husband now, right? You're trying to problem save, solve yeah. it. Yeah, but I couldn't see the, I couldn't see any possible solutions before because I was just stuck in the suffering bit. Yeah ideas yeah yeah so that's really that's really the the, the 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 concept of it and you can look at this across history you can look at this across time you know you could think of people in the, in the holocaust for example you know if you were taken into a concentration camp 
and you you know you, that you saw the guards stripping you people naked beating people pulling gold teeth out if you walked up to a guard and you said this is not right what you're doing is not right what do you think that guard would do he just shoot you dead he just shoot boom yeah. shoot you and it's all over but if you walked in and you noticed and you thought oh my god this is something that i have no understanding of but things are different here what you might do is you might keep your head down and try and find ways of of of, of, of surviving so when we don't ex so when we don't accept it might lead to sadness yeah it might lead to sadness but it doesn't lead to a deep everlasting um sadness and so so this is about accepting uh misery and that sometimes when we're in very difficult situations yeah we need to accept those situations so that we can move our brain along yeah and and some people struggle to accept um their lives as they are some people refuse to accept certain emotions you know some of you may not want to be sad or some of you may not want to get angry but what are the consequences of not expressing those emotions usually they build up and they um and they and they have consequences later yeah so, mabel says um i've radically accepted that it's best to go home to my family for christmas this year i was pretty sad to begin with but now i'm trying to make the most of the situation yes and that's exactly it and, and what i would say to to yes actually a breakdown is one of the consequences. and what i would say to to mabel is that you know mabel doesn't have to accept that next christmas would be the same so when we're doing acceptance we don't have to accept things in the future yeah we only we only accept things that are that are, that are that, you know in the immediate now or in or in or in the past yeah yeah well praveen says um i'm not quite sure i understand what you mean praveen praveen says um the sweet memories of the previous i think it's the past affect me and refuse to make accept Praveen, if I understand correctly, you're saying that the sweet memories of the past that you have are affecting you and are making it difficult for you to accept what's happening in the present. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Yeah. So what she's talking about is that she she's spending time thinking about how how great things were in the past. Yeah. yeah. And and that in itself, right? That is itself is a denial of now, isn't it? I'm not saying she she cannot enjoy memories from the past. But if, if all you do is think back to how things used to be, this 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 creates suffering um, because it's 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 not very it's not very cognitively flexible, is it? We, we we want people to accept their life as it is now, not the life they wish they had, not the life they hope they had, but the life that they have in this moment, because this moment is all we've got. The past is gone and you can never look. My time machine is broken. And we can't go back and change anything right but what we can do is we can recognize the situation that we're in now yeah yeah oh lucy says how do you accept that other other people's decisions from the people that you love such as your mom making poor choices while you live at home how, how do you accept them how do you accept other people's decisions? You know, people that you love, how do you accept their decisions, such as your mom making poor choices while you live at home with her? Well, I would think about the consequences of, of not accepting them. What is going to happen to you? What's going to happen to you if you don't accept them? It's unlikely to affect your mom that much. Yeah. It, it, it's a bit like, you know, it's a bit like, you know, if you don't accept someone else's decisions, and 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 you become willful or have tantrums about it and stuff like that it's a bit like be it's a bit like getting angry with someone you drinking poison and hoping that they die um you not accepting it just has a, a, a makes you makes you suffer more doesn't it yeah so look the thing about acceptance right and 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 this is a skill called turning the mind and this might help acceptance to accept something seems to require some kind of choice yeah and acceptance can last a moment um or it can last years um but we need to develop a way of being able to return to it again and again so you know so and and, and for, so for example um some things are easier to accept than others right so during lockdown 
it, it you know it was you know I like eating in restaurants and that was difficult for me to accept that I couldn't go out and and have a, a have a nice meal but if I lost you know but if I lost both my legs in a car accident then that's going to take me longer to accept it's going to re require more effort in terms of accepting something than um not being able to eat out for a few months and 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 what I'm talking about here is that Ultimately, we all have to accept who we are and our limitations and our imperfections and stuff like that. And if we don't, then we suffer. Yeah. And and the way that we don't accept things is thinking that this shouldn't be like that. This is not fair. Feet stomping, you know, you know, refusing, not right, not fair, it's terrible. Yeah. So. What we try to do is we try to notice what goes on in our body when we are not accepting. You know, people often fold their arms, people often clench their, their jaw, yeah? So one of the ways that we can practice um, radical acceptance, and I hope we're gonna put this up on Instagram, right? There are, there, are some, um, there are some techniques that people can do. Just things like reminding themselves about cause and effect, yeah, everything. There is cause and there's a cause and effect to, to everything. If 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 you get hit by if you get beaten by your partner, yeah, and you don't leave your partner um, because of the way they behave to you, you 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 are likely to make this happen again. You are part of making it happen again, whether what they did was right or not. So we want to understand the cause and effect of our. Of, of our decisions and, and, and actions. Mona Lisa says, how do we differentiate between staying positive and hopeful of a very negative situation and denial? You mean like hoping that hoping that this person will change? Yeah, or that things will get, but yeah, hoping the situation will get better and yeah. Yeah, that would be fact checking, wouldn't it? You know, if, 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 if you're with someone and they're, t they're, they're drunk and they hit you once, then, um, you know, they've hit you once in 10 years. That's very different to hoping someone that beating you every Friday or on a regular basis is, is, is going to change. So you can look at the you can look at the facts and take the emotion out of it. And that 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 would be a way that could could help somewhat. Yeah. And often when we are. Um, and often when we're refusing to accept stuff, what we're really doing is um, we're being willful. We're, we're refusing to tolerate that moment. We're refusing to make changes that are needed. We are, you know, we're giving up. We're doing the opposite of being effective, of being what works for us. We're trying to control things. Yeah, we're often a, a, a tra attached to the idea of what we want right now when we're, we're, when we're not accepting of stuff. Yeah. And, and, and so really, it is about that, you know, and, and when people are being willful, you can be willful by having, you know, you can be having will you there's different types of willfulness. I'm just, I'm just seeing the question from Agnes. And I was going to answer that if you can read it out because it flashed up and yep. what's the difference with resignation if there is one? Well, the thing about resignation is that resignation so willfulness, which is what I was talking about, can be active or passive. Yeah, we can feel full of energy when we're thinking, "I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to accept this." Yeah, but the other one is to just give up. You know what? I'm not going to. You know, it just is what it is. There's nothing I can do to change it. I, you know, uh, you know, you know, it, it, you know, I'll never get another boyfriend or girlfriend. I'll just, you know, I'll just be passive about it. So resignation is like a passive kind of willfulness. Yeah. We, we would, what we would do is, what this is designed to do is to give us problem solving. How am I gonna get out of this, this situation? Or, you know, what can I do to change things? So you go back to problem, to, to problem solving. So rather than giving up, and that's what resignation often is. Um, well, I have a, I had a question actually about this because, um, because what I found with, with radical acceptance is that at first, for me, um, accepting a painful situation can bring more pain at first. So it doesn't, you know, and I just wanted to know if you could like address that because yeah, it might not last, but I would tend to avoid 
accepting because I know that if I accept, it's going to be that awful pain first. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I was talking about, the difference between um, uh, 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 pain and uh, pain and suffering. I think what I like, uh, the, the way I try to think about it is I try to think of it in turn in the mind. Do I want to go towards reality or do I want to go towards rejecting um, rejecting reality? And often another part of it is not making decisions as well. So the way I would answer it is that, you know, if, if you all right, there's, there's an old fable about a camel walking through the desert that's dying of dehydration and this camel comes to a path in it comes to a path and down one path it kind of remembers that one of these paths had beautiful spring water and if it drank it everything would be fine and down the other path there was a dry well and if it went down that path it was gonna it was gonna it was gonna uh, uh, die so one path leads to being well, the other path leads to, to dying. And the, and the camel just stood there for so long trying to decide what, what to do that he died where he's standing. So sometimes when we just, uh, so sometimes not making a decision um, can, be, uh, can be problematic for us. Yeah. I don't know if that answered your question really, but. Um, no, <laughs> no, it, I, I, no, I just wanted to highlight, I guess, that, 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 for, that for me sometimes, yeah, I get the difference between pain and suffering, but for me, like, if you're, if we're going to come out of the suffering mode into, you know, problem solving, we have to go through more pain first sometimes. Yes, well, first of all, the first thing we do is we need to make, like the camel, we need to make a choice. And you know what, some of our choices won't work out. That camel could, that camel could choose that camel could choose the path that led 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 to it, its own demise because it doesn't know which way to go, and 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 but 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 we but the, the, but if the camel makes the movement and chooses at least, it has it has a chance by doing nothing by being willful and doing nothing then we have no chance. Yeah. So because and that would be accepting that sometimes things are not going to work out, then we, yeah. we go again and we problem solve again. But then is fear being willful? Because sometimes people don't decide because they're scared. Well, is, this, is the fear going to kill them? No. No. So, um, so if, if, look, if you're feeling scared because, you know, it, it, it's usual to be scared, but fear is, a, is an emotion that motivates us to action, not to inaction. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Daryl, for our... Um for today's tool of the week. And now um, we are going to go over to Marge in the Mindset Lab because Marge, I believe you have something extra, a little extra piece of, of goodies for us to help us with the concept of radical acceptance. You have a bit of a story, I think, right? Yeah, I do. So this is a story um, about letting go. And, you know, as that will touched on a big part of radical acceptance is about our choices and ability to let go. So this is called the monkey trap. And it goes first, fix an empty calabash or a similar vessel to the ground and cut a hole in it just big enough for a monkey to fit its hand through when its fingers are extended. Put a good handful of nuts inside and wait. So when the monkey comes along, it will grab a handful of nuts and try to run off the nuts but the monkey cannot get its hand back out because its hand is now full of nuts. So you basically have caught a monkey. But the monkey never thinks to let go of the nuts. It has effectively trapped itself for its own grasping and cannot see the only way of escape is to basically let go. So are you like that monkey? Desperately holding on to the aspects of life that are negative, causing you distress, are you trapped in a grasping cycle of debt, overwork, misery, with no means of escape? The lifestyle you cling to has got you by the nuts then, and you cannot do anything about it until you let go. You can stay where you are, holding on to your nuts, and spend the rest of your life in a state of self-imposed captivity. Or you can let go of the nuts and enjoy your freedom. The choice is simple. Even the monkey will get wise eventually. And yeah, that's called the monkey trap. And you can, you guys can Google that and, you know, maybe read it again. And there's, there's so much nuggets in there. Over to Virginia and Barbara. 
Thank you, Marge. Right, competition announcement, right? Yeah, we've also announced a, new, uh, announced a new competition last week. The competition was to send a holiday playlist on Spotify with the songs that take you out of unwanted emotions. And the winner will, will get be a well-being kit That's curated right. by us, the Mindset team. Here it is. Check out this lovely box. Yeah. And um, yeah, oh. just send us your holiday playlist. And what you can do is send them via direct message on mm -hmm. Instagram. Yeah. And um, we'll also make a compilation at the end so we yeah. can all listen to all of the songs that you guys have sent in. Yeah. We also um, we started the compilation already. We have lots of entries so far. So thank you very much. And we're all going to be discovering a lot of a lot of new styles as well, right? Because mm -hmm. any style of music goes, there's some hard rock in there. There's Maybe some, some heavy metal. <laughs> there is, there is, yeah. Some there's screamo. Some, yeah, a bit of everything, right? So uh, there we go. Okay. Um, and remember that everyone will go into a draw when you send in your tunes. So it is a fair competition. Yeah. It not the one with the most songs. <laughs> won't be rigged. I mean, yeah. it wasn't rigged last time. It wasn't rigged. No, no, no. <laughs> so that's it for this week's mindset. Um, if you get a chance to spread the word to others who may want to develop their mindset too. Uh, and remember that you can send in any questions as well that you have during the week. So if you're practicing radical acceptance and you get stuck or whatever, just, you know, send us questions. Send an email to uh, mindset at bodyandsoulcharity.org. Importantly, we want to uh, tell the audience that mindset is not designed for crisis support. So if you find yourself unable to keep yourself safe in the next 24 hours or the next week, please contact your university's well-being service or the crisis team if you're registered or go to the nearest A&E department. The Samaritans can be reached at 116-123. We hope you'll stay with us every week and keep, keep working, working on, on your mindset. mindset. Thank Bye you. everyone. Thank you for tuning in today.